it's a longer story. Uh, I was 16 and I had two sisters, twin sisters who were 18. And I uh, was in town and wanted to go home to my family's house. So I went to my sister's place and asked her if she comes with me uh, and we go together to a family's house in the countryside. So then we took the car, uh, I convinced her to come and then we took the car to uh, the family's house and our maid, she drove because we both didn't have a license yet. And then after 15 minutes drive there was a left corner and the came a car who crashed frontally in our, in our car. So at that point uh, I lost consciousness and I didn't remember for two days actually. But when I woke up my father told me that my sister died in the accident and she was already buried. So this was very, very difficult for me. Mm -hmm. As I was 16 years old and uh, it was too big shock for me actually. So at the beginning, I I tried to just not think about it, and I even couldn't cry when my sister died. And I just yeah tried not to think about it and go out a lot late night. And so when I was 20, I. I saw that all this going out and all this luxury life and all the partying was not very fulfilling. It's, it's fun, but it's on a certain level, it's very superficial. So, you know, like people who have, have their yachts in France or girlfriends and this and that, they, they are shortly happy, but if I watch this friends of my father, for example, my father himself, I see that they are very short time happy. There's a very short time of happiness. That there's no real, uh, how can you say, satisfaction and uh, uh, thankfulness of life. So I then started to uh, do yoga, and I started to read books about Asian philosophy, and uh, withdraw from all this. Uh, society people and lived in the countryside and, and then uh, I had a strong experience which made me really uh, understand or experience that there is something else that then what we can see. Mm -hmm. uh, so I began to practice more regularly and especially I wanted to practice Zen meditation or Zen Buddhist meditation, so I found a place through the Japanese embassy here in Munich and then practiced very regularly, twice a week in the center and on the weekends I practiced and find a good teacher actually. Mm -hmm. And then I was uh, 24 and I then took part in a weekly meditation session, you call it, where uh, you meditate for a whole week, and there comes, uh, there came a Japanese Zen master, which I then had personal instructions with him, and uh, uh, really, really wished that I could follow more deeply this this uh, way of Buddhism or this way of meditation. So I decided when I was. Uh, yeah, 24, it was uh, 1984, quite some time ago, to give up everything. And uh, I spoke to my father, which he always tried to uh, push me in his companies. My father had brick factories, and he wanted always me to be his successor. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but anyway, the years before, I already lived like somebody in the mountains alone and so but anyway he still hoped that I be a successor but then I told him that I give up uh, everything and uh, will go to Japan to become a, a Zen monk, Zen Buddhist monk. Mm -hmm. So I gave away all my things, presented to friends and people and then it was uh, December 
1984, when my sister, she drove me to the, the uh, highway here in Munich, and uh, I was slightly snowing, and I put my thumb up and hitchhiked to Japan. So uh, it was a great experience. I've had nothing anymore, and I didn't know what will happen because I don't know where I sleep, I don't know what I eat, and I don't know nothing. But I had a very, a very, how can I say, trustful feeling. I was was very sure that this is okay, and I don't didn't know anything where I go, where I will be. I wanted to go to Japan. This was the aim, but it's a long way. So then I went, somebody took me to the next city, next city, and then finally I went to uh, Turkey and then I stayed in, in Iran with some very nice people and Pakistan, India, and then slowly, slowly after eight months of travel, I visited, in India I visited all these Buddhist uh, original uh, monasteries where Buddha was enlightened and all that, and stayed in the monastery also, and I did that in one. And then after eight months I came to Japan and went to the Zen master and um, told him that I'm the one he met in Germany, probably had met more guys than me, and I wanted to go to a Zen monastery. So then he, he said, yeah, it's very difficult, you can't, uh, can't enter. It's interesting that uh, in Buddhism generally there is no um, uh, no missionary thought, so they don't like to or need. They don't want to convince you. They further more say, please don't come, you know? and then they want to see how how eager you are if you really want to go. So I stayed one one year in Japan, learned the Japanese language and different arts like calligraphy and the Zen fluid and all that. And then after year one year, then. I stayed for several months in this small temple and then I became a Buddhist monk. The first one in this monastery since the monastery was built for 650 years. And uh, it was very hard. I, 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 you have an idea about going in the monastery, but once you're there, it's like, oh, you almost don't sleep and there's long time meditation and it's really painful. Uh, not only mentally, but also bodily. But I thought that what I experienced, and with, I mean, I've been doing this now for 30 years, and I experienced that the difficult situation helped help you to develop uh, inner mental, how can you say, strengths and also peace of mind. So I was sitting in that meditation hall and you have these special questions that you've been given by your master. So I asked an elder monk, uh, how, how can I solve this question? It's, uh, maybe you heard about this koan, it's not, maybe not so famous. It's like, this is the sound of two hands, what is the sound of one hand? Mm -hmm. And the idea is that your mind and your intellect and your knowledge is very good for many, many things in your everyday life. But to understand the ultimate idea which is behind the statue, the statue of Christ or the statue of Buddha, which is beyond your mind, call it God or call it nothingness or call it whatever you want, it's not good to think about it. You can think about it, sure, but it's more an experience than a thought. So we had these questions and I asked that monk, this elder monk, how can I more go deeper in this idea, in this existential idea, and solve this existential yeah, question. So he told me that you should concentrate on the moment the two cars crashed. When I had this accident with 16 and my, my sister died at 18. And I couldn't remember for two days because my, my consciousness just pushed it away very, very deep. But I always had this feeling there is something inside like slightly burning and you know, like this unease, you always had, I always had this feeling. 
but it could not really concrete what it was. So I concentrated on this moment of, of when the two cars crashed, and then through the meditation, everything came up again. So when the cars crashed, I could see, and then how I had to I had to get out of the car and I had to go over the body of my sister to go run out of the car and all this not really nice things. And I, I, uh, I then, yeah, after I experienced that, that was really, it was very, very difficult because I pushed it away for so long time. So I went to my master and wanted to talk to him about this problem because I had to somehow digest it. But he, the Japanese people, they are more people who they, to have digested themselves, but we are, uh, through our Christian tradition, we are more used to speak to somebody to digest, like in the church as well. So, as he couldn't, or he didn't talk to me, I said, okay, then I write it down. So I took a, a little book and wrote everything down which came up in my memory, like it happened, the accident, and, and how I got out of the car, and all of this. And it was very, very hard for me to, to, to conf confront myself with, uh, with that all oh, this is terrible scene. And then I wrote it again, and I wrote it, and I wrote it. And then after I could read it without feeling pain and blame, because I blamed myself to convince my sister that she comes with me, and after she died, you know. And after, after I could read without suffering and, and pain. I then took the paper on a plate and I set it on fire and let it go inside and symbolically outside also. And that helped me a lot, but I think, you know, like, I pushed it away for, for, for quite some, some years at the beginning because I was just too young to deal with the problem. But, I mean, if I wouldn't have this accident, and I wouldn't go to the monastery, maybe I, 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 I'm sure I would live, live a totally different life, you know. So, this hard uh, experience in my life and the hard practice in the monastery really mm -hmm. was necessary to digest the problem. And it, at the end it was like, I don't understand why this happened. I cannot really tell you why my system had to die, but it, it, it changed my life totally after a certain time. And also, you know, I think it's the accident and this terrible situation in my life, which many people have in other ways, you know, will not change your life mm -hmm. until you face it. I think you have to face it, and then it's, it's, it has some power to to change your life and help you to develop yourself and then maybe once you did it for yourself maybe there is a point that you can do it for others as well.